Hey guys, this is Heads Up Display and we're giving you a brand new thing and it's called a discussion panel and it's going to be about Sailor Moon. I'm Melissa Peden. I'm Caitlin Taylor. And I'm David Torres. And we're going to be starting the conversation. And we're going to leave it to Caitlin. All right. So this idea kind of came up from one of my classes where I'm actually doing a research paper about Sailor Moon. So I was very interested to see like what other people thought about Sailor Moon and like the reasoning behind it. So for the question one is, in y'all's opinion, what is the distinction between Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal? One, I would say Sailor Moon, the first animation that was made is more about girly power and just fainting all the time and then Sailor Moon Crystal to me is more about actually taking charge and learning their abilities and actually fighting. Uh, I guess more on that, yeah, like definitely the old, earlier animation, more that cheesy thing that you had a lot of the team dynamic back then, you know, like they all fight a bad guy, learn a lesson in the end, they were, I guess as anime's gotten more popular in the West, Sailor Moon Crystal's gotten more like, you know, mature themes and deeper storyline. Awesome. And from what the fans have said and from what the author has said, there is a big distinction with Sailor Moon Crystal and the original Sailor Moon. The original Sailor Moon kind of looked like this, which I don't know if you can actually see it or not. This was one of the original books that they came out with it about Sailor Moon. And so compared to this one, this is the newer one, which with the anime Sailor Moon Crystal, it definitely follows more along the storyline of this one than the older one. So. Do you have any other comments about Sailor Moon Crystal or questions? Um, I actually have never read the mangas. I've just watched the TV series, so I'm not sure about the comparison of, about the original Sailor Moon versus the Crystal Sailor Moon. I've read some of the manga for Crystal, so I, I definitely see that it's like stuck, like it sticks to the original plot line. So I'm, I don't think I could really compare the two. Mm. Yeah, and a lot of people do have that problem with it. Um, Sailor Moon Crystal is definitely more of it's the older girl, like it's the younger girl transforming into an older persona and taking on the world versus a little kid that over filler episodes turns into that same woman. So Sailor Moon Crystal is a lot more like action packed and fast paced with the transformation of turning into like a woman. The next question would be, what do you think from seeing the television shows, what do you think are the themes of Sailor Moon? I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> well, back when I first saw Sailor Moon, I was really into Power Rangers at the time, like so, and X Men and oh. Avengers, all those comic book <laughs> things. I saw a lot mm -hmm. of those teams and stuff, but I never really saw a bunch of teams with like an all girl cast, you know? So when I first saw it, Sailor Moon, I kept coming back to it over and over again, and to me, it was really cool to see like a bunch of, like, not only a bunch of girls do it, but like these weren't like staple girls who were like, oh, friendship is power and things like that. No, they had distinct personalities. One was, you know, book smart, one was street smart, one was tough, tomboy. And so to me, I kept coming back to that and it definitely had more that, to me it always meant that sort of team dynamic, but you know, with a with female persona kind of thing, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know. And it's also interesting that you mentioned like the whole Power Rangers thing, because that was actually, some people assume that Sailor, uh, Sailor Moon was just like a response to the Power Rangers. And it kind of was. The author said something about, it. she was kind of sick of just watching just uh, the Power Rangers and so like she created something that was that could speak to girls of all ages and not just little girls but it's something that would speak up to us as adults like I'm 22 years old and I still watch Sailor Moon because it's one of those things that you grow up with it and it speaks to you on different levels. Allie. Okay um, I guess the theme of it is definitely um, definitely the girl power you don't see a lot of that especially in today's society I know uh, Miyazaki he does a great job of showing that girls don't need guys for help I mean they need uh, probably a friend to push them or uh, kind of like tuxedo mask he's only there when needed when the girls are uh, at, at a point where they could use a little help but he's never there for the entire battle so he'll come in shoot a rose and then leave so it's all about the girls taking control and not seeing I need a man for this so uh, I, it's more about power and the women and how uh, they, they're independent. Exactly, I agree completely with y'all. The last thing I would really wanna talk about in the last two or three minutes we have, um, you've both been exposed to the transformation scene, right? Yeah. Whether the old one or the new one. What do you think about that and what do you think that says about the girl transforming in that way? 
Like, what does it remind you of? Or I know for a lot of guys, they probably thought dirty thoughts. Um. I mean, they really need to focus on the heels and stuff. <laughs> Um, as shoes a, are what I focused on, okay, honestly. <laughs> well, as a little girl watching it, I definitely thought it was, uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was a different technique and changing into clothes, and it explains a lot because you see superheroes just magically somehow get into their uniform where, it, like, this is a universe thing where it just, like, it's in the universe, so you change with that, and then your clothes come back on. It's kind of like Beast Boy, how his, his clothes just always stay, and he turns into an animal with no clothes, and then somehow they're never ripped, and he turns back, so that's my perspective on it. Honestly, like, I don't remember much of like the different details, like the spinning around. I remember like the lightning and fire that were behind each of the scouts and stuff like that said more about them as like their powers and personality and stuff. So, I don't know. But the fact that it was like, I guess in the older show, like restocked over and over again. Mm -hmm. He used to go and get like a refill on my water or soda or something while it happened. But, yeah. Did you, while watching the transformation scenes, did you ever make the connection that the moves, or like the way, she, like especially like Sailor Moon, for example, whenever she's going like this, it actually ties into, the, the idea of that came from figure ice skating. Really? Have you ever oh, thought about yeah. that? Yeah, okay, now that I, you tell me, yeah. And like the spinning and stuff, it, it ties back to that. And so I thought that was very interesting that the author would say about that just because it's like when you watch it as a kid like you don't make that connection but now as an adult you're like she took inspiration from real life figure skaters like female figure skaters and she transformed it into something that would live on forever i haven't thought about that way that's, that's <laughs> now cool. that i see it yeah definitely it definitely is figure skating i guess i should have picked that up on one of the episodes where jupiter is like the best ice skater i feel like <laughs> oh i, I never even missed I yeah yeah i should have picked that up <laughs> all right and so I guess the biggest takeaway from this, just as the viewers, would be if you've never seen Sailor Moon, I highly encourage you to watch it because it's something that, as you can see, not only girls, but it's something men can also enjoy as well. It's definitely about a transformation of a small girl, a 12-year-old, into like a woman. And that you follow that development all the way through and you feel connected to her as a character and as the friends too. I'm not gonna lie, whenever I'm talking to Allie right here, I call her Sailor Moon and she calls me Sailor Jupiter. That is our friend's name. Yeah. But it's definitely, it's a story, it's a coming of age story that is something that will live on forever. And I think it's something that's very important for everyone to watch at least one episode. My quick two cents. Um, the older version is definitely an age gap. So just be yeah. aware, it's just part of the anime and it's probably kind of like culture wise. Um, so don't get offended by it. The newer Crystal, uh, they're actually closer in age, and so it's not as weird. Uh, if that makes you uncomfortable, just be aware, but it, other than that, it's a really good show to watch. I would say check out both versions, definitely. The Western one, the older one, would definitely hold a special place in my heart, because it was back at the time for me, especially me, when I was a kid, I first got introduced to anime. So it did have a lot of like dubisms and Western stuff. Like yeah. My favorite line always sticks to me is like, they talk to the cat, don't be such a Stoichmeister. <laughs> it's such a 90s thing, yeah, but. Yeah, Luna, we have a Luna. <laughs> I love Luna. But, uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of any anime. I just want to see a bit of what was going on at the time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this slight panel. We're hoping it might be a new segment. But if you liked it, then I hope you will click, like, and subscribe our other content in our channel. And hopefully we'll see you here again. And a uh, big shout out to me and Caitlin. This was our last episode. And David is new, so he will be back. Um, so we just want to say our final goodbyes. Thank you so much for having us at this display. And we really appreciate it. And Thank you for joining. This has been Heads Up Display. I'm Melissa Peden. I'm Caitlin Taylor. I'm David Torres. And this has been Heads Up Display. <coughs>